to show you some ideas for creating containers that are more affordable. This was a requested video by many viewers and I thought, you know what, that's a really good idea. So thank you so much for giving us the idea on this video. Today I'm going to go through containers that are smaller, so not these big guys today because let's go back and scale down a little bit to what most of us have. So I'm going to have you guys come and follow me. This garden would look pretty dull because behind it are my raspberries. So these are some of my older pots and these pots here are, they're a 10 inch pot and they're about a foot high. And I dug into the ground just a little bit there. And then I went ahead and placed the pot in it. And then inside I put some potting soil and Osmocote because that's the time release fertilizer that helps you keep it going. So if you get a lot of rainy weather, the Osmocote fertilizer is time release and that is your backup plan. And that's what helps it continue to produce all these blossoms and flowers. So let's get back to the varieties here. I've got seed geraniums and snapdragons. That's it. And look how gorgeous. Seed geraniums and snapdragons. So with seed geraniums, I actually get those from my parents' garden center and they sell them for only 99 cents. At other places, they may be about $2 or less. There's four of them in there, which you could cut back to only three. And then I put in snapdragons, which are very easy to seed in your own home. And I, um, I actually seeded some snapdragons in the house this year, if you wanted to catch that video on how to seed start in your home. If you scroll down the gardening playlist, you'll find it. But for these, I actually got this variety from my parents' garden center as well. And they carry these in four packs for only like $1.99. So snapdragons are very inexpensive. There's a lot of great flowering annuals that you can find that are very inexpensive. They come in like those flat prices that you see at garden centers where they're like, oh, $14.99 a flat. Or if you're going to an expensive place, they'll say $19.99 a flat. Sheesh, that's a lot. But you know, if you think about it, if there's 36 to 48 plants per flat, that's pretty inexpensive because, you know, you go to these garden centers and you're buying a proven winner and those proven winners are going to be, you know, anywhere from $3.79 to $7 per plant. So that's why the seeded varieties are actually always very nice to go with because with the seed geraniums, those are started by seed and other geraniums are called cut geraniums. And those are the ones that you can actually take cuttings off of and duplicate, which is a whole nother video. So let's keep going. All right, so I wanna show you a window box that I did that is super affordable. Um, I actually used a lot of random leftover things that I had. So, so in this window box, I have the flowering kale. This is one that is asked about more than any other plant because I have it in many different colors. So in this one, it's the light green, but as soon as it gets cool out, it'll get more of a white center with like a pink ruffle on it, which will continue to show that progress. But with these, they're very easy to seed on your own. They're also a more affordable option at garden centers if they carry them there. And um, so with these, uh, these ones were only four in a pack for $1.99. So you're paying 50 cents for a plant. You can't go wrong. So that's why I'm able to load them up in there. And then the snapdragons are the same thing as over there. Same price. Um, these ones actually seeded indoors. So, um, you know, the seed costed me maybe a few bucks, but I've, I got like 80 plants off of it. And then right here too, the, the blue Victoria salvia, it's also a seeded annual. So this is super easy to start in your home as well. So all this stuff. And then in back here is the millet grass. Um, so with the millet grass, that does cost a little bit more because the seed is more. You can seed that on your own. And then over in the front is the Alteranthera. So this is one that costs more. This is, this is uh, like around like a, almost a $4 plant. But what's really cool about Alteranthera is you can actually take the tip off, and this is like many plants, but you can take the tip off, place it in soil, and it will root. So if you want to get one plant, you know, at the end of the season or whenever, or start duplicating your plants to save money, this is one of those plants that you can duplicate and add it as a really nice filler and trailer in your containers. If you have an empty space in your garden or in your landscape somewhere, 
throw in a few sunflower seeds. That's all I did. This was always a bare space. And I'm like, oh, you know, I just, I just want to like step it up a little bit, but shrubs are expensive and our budget is like tight right now because we are, we're doing the greenhouse. So I threw in some sunflower seeds and look it, it filled it in. And then look over here. What's great about using the sunflower seeds is that it also can help you block anything that you don't want to see. So in our sitting area, we had a clear view of the neighbor's house, which I don't mind because it's a beautiful home. But when I'm sitting there, I want to feel a little bit more enclosed. So Daddy. for now, seeded little varieties like that really help out. This is another garden I really want to talk about because everybody talks about how beautiful it is, but what people don't know is how affordable it was to create this garden. All of the snapdragons in this bed, I seeded inside of my house. These blue Victoria salvia were only four for a dollar ninety-nine, and or it was a whole flat of forty-eight for only fourteen ninety-nine. I mean, come on, you can't beat it. And then right here we've got the flowering kale crane red. I seeded those in the house, so I mean, yeah, you're you're putting time into it, but overall you are saving money when you're seeding your own varieties. And let's not forget the state fair zinnias. I've got little pockets of these everywhere, hidden all over, but they don't stay hidden for long as soon as they come into blossom because look at them. They're amazing. The height is gorgeous, the, the color, the size of the flower. You can use them for cut flowers. You can float the flowers in water on a table. They're just awesome and I just love them. And the more you cut them, the more they just keep producing. And that's also an easy seeded annual. You can seed it on your own. Please guys, take a chance at seeding your own. It's, it's, it's not that hard and I've got videos to help you. So if you scroll down that gardening playlist, go to seeding in your house, because now I have a greenhouse, but that's why this year I made sure to create videos on how to seed indoors, how to maintain indoors, so that way you guys have that because not everyone has a greenhouse. So I just wanted to share that with you. All right, and now let's talk about this guy right here. This is an 18 inch planter, round, potting soil in there, osmocote in there, and look at seeded annuals in there. Another cheap planter, flowering kale, two of these guys. So that's only like 50 cents. Wait, let's see, a dollar, sorry, a dollar. <laughs> And then you've got the, the snapdragons in a set of four. Like I'll put four in a bundle, we're at $5. And then you add in these right here, the blue Victoria Salvia, and now you're at $7. So right now you got $7 with just those varieties. That would be a good budget. So yeah, I do have the, the millet in here, which you could cut out, because obviously you see it's getting taken over. And then you see the beautiful gum frina here. This is by Proven Winners. This is really gorgeous, but because it's a Proven Winner, it's gonna cost you anywhere from four to six or seven dollars per plant. So that's why I always try to intermix a lot of the seeded varieties to cut the budget down. The plants that do cost a little bit more, there's a reason why. And the reason for that is because of how big they get and how they perform, how they blossom, there is a little bit of a difference. So that's why I do intermix some of the more expensive plants into the seeded um, into the seeded flowers. So that way together, they really play off of each other well. So it's great on the budget and it's great in looks, it's great in growth and it performs well all season long. Here's another small little tabletop planter. And all I did was mix rosemary and this beautiful little purple gum frina. And you know what's really nice about it is that there's only two varieties and this container still stands out even amongst all of this. I always walk by and I'm like, oh, how cute. So don't forget to intermix your herbs with flowers as well because you can enjoy it, but then it also is great for smelling it and whatever else you like to use herbs for. So that's what I like about it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few other herb containers that I've done. So here I've got an assortment of containers. They're all in terracotta pots. They're in eight inch pots. Um, this one has the eucalyptus in it. This one here is a proven winner, so it's a little bit more, but I do have eucalyptus around this area that I did seed indoors and the seed was cheap. And you know what? It's just as pretty, but it doesn't get as vigorous. This grew a lot faster than my homegrown eucalyptus. But this one's so gorgeous. 
So you could always do one that's homegrown so you don't have to pay the proven winner price. But, or you could do the proven winner and have a beautiful big plant immediately. So that's what I love about it. And then with it, I have the thyme. So this is really nice as well. So I just intermix some greens because you don't need a lot of color when you've got that beautiful patina terracotta. The mint is so great on its own. It adds a nice fragrance. You can seed mint on your own so easily. It is one that you really can't go wrong with and it loves moisture. So if you give it too much water, it will suck it up. Um, so that's, that's one thing is with the mint, you have to water it daily when it's this size because it needs it, it loves the water. So right here is my Italian oregano, starting to get its beautiful flowers on it. I know a lot of you are gonna say, well, don't you cut it before the flowers? Well, yeah, I, I do, I do, but I've been loving it. I'm just letting things kind of go a little bit more wild, more of that country look. I just, I love how it looks in that terracotta pot and it just smells so good. So I'll probably trim off a few for that fragrance. When we come out the door and we walk down the steps, having the herbs in the small pots is so nice and they're so easy to seed on your own. But if you're buying them in stores, they're, they're not much money. But look at how much this has grown for just one plant, just one plant in an eight inch. So I'm just showing you guys that you don't need a lot in a pot. You really don't. I know I show you guys how I'm an overstuffer, but you know, sometimes you just gotta allow things to just do their own thing. And by giving them the space, they do. So um, some planters are nicer when they're just left simple. And then here, this is one of my favorites. This is Secrecia. That's set Cresia. And this is the variegated leaf. And I love it, I absolutely love it. It's used as more of a succulent. You see it used in landscape borders in Mexico a lot, at like a lot of the resorts. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's so easy to maintain because it hardly ever needs any water. So it's kind of a bit like a succulent. The asparagus fern, this is one of my favorites. And it will get huge. A lot of these I'm wintering over this year in the greenhouse because I want ginormous, ginormous plants for next year. I want to share with you another variety of zinnias that are amazing for containers. And that is the Dreamland series of zinnias. They are um, a multicolor. So look at all this beautiful color. They don't get any higher than 14 inches. They mainly stay between 10 and 12, but sometimes if they're getting more water in an area like right over here, see how these ones got a little taller than these ones over here? There's a little bit of a difference. And that's because these ones over here get more of the flow of the water coming through, but they don't exceed the 14 inches. So you could literally do solid containers of these dreamland zinnias and you would be happy all season long because i mean who wouldn't take a look at these guys they're absolutely stunning and they're beautiful and i mean we just love them in our garden i don't know if you guys can see like the excitement radiating here but uh, <laughs> <laughs> i love zinnias and um my two favorites state fair the tall ones i showed you before and these dreamlands oh they're just so gorgeous and they attract a lot of butterflies and hummingbirds which we've been enjoying watching from our sitting areas and inside the house if you guys are liking this video so far and you're loving the tips please feel free to subscribe on that little box below and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications every time we put out a new video that can really help you in your garden and let's not forget succulents for containers because succulents are so easy to duplicate to where if you duplicate them in the winter time, summertime comes, you plant them together and you got yourself a free container. It's free if you already have succulents, but if you don't, you go out, you buy a few, you duplicate about a hundred off of just those few. I mean, yeah, that's how easy it is. And if you guys go to the gardening playlist and scroll down, I show you how to propagate your um, succulents, how to take cuttings on succulents. So you can either take it on the top or a leaf. I'll sh I show that in detail on there and how we do it. Um, I'm gonna quickly just show you our succulent little collection over here too. Hey, stop lingering on that <laughs> succulent container. It looks so good. Here's our succulent collection. We should have bumped everything up already months ago, but we have been so busy with projects. I mean, you guys see what's going on over here. 
and I'm um, so busy harvesting and growing all kinds of stuff so we've just left them so I'm hoping um, after this shoot that we have with Country Gardens magazine I'm hoping that after that I'll have a little bit more time to putz and play this is our entire succulent collection here so far it's, it's almost becoming like a hobby to me collecting these succulents <laughs> I mean you know don't laugh, Jason. You used to collect baseball cards. I think collecting succulents is a heck of a lot cooler. Yeah, <laughs> now it is. You can duplicate a ton of succulents is what I'm saying and create containers off of that. So that would save you money. I know I said I wasn't going to talk big containers and I'm not, but I'm going to talk coleus here. So say you have a 10, 12, 16, 18 inch container and you know your, your budget's small and you don't know how to fill it. Seriously, like one coleus plant can fill it. One coleus plant, as long as it's not the seeded variety. And I mean the ones that come in flat sizes. You want the coleus that are sold per pot. Okay, so look how huge. This one here, I want Jason to come over here quick. I just wanna show you guys how aggressive these guys are and in a really good way. So this one here, is so huge could you imagine putting just one of those in a 12 inch container everybody on the block would be asking you what the heck that is and you could say hey i only paid four bucks for that <laughs> and you know some potting soil of course look at the size you guys have i convinced you yet seriously this is one this is one plant i'm not kidding it goes from there to here and that's through my pinching methods as well, which I do show a video on that. So if you go and take that tip off, that can be a whole nother plant. Stick that in soil, keep that soil a little bit more on the wet side. It'll root and make a whole nother plant. So that's what's so cool about coleus. And you can overwinter them in the house or in the greenhouse, but if that's the case, you keep them dry. So in case you're wondering what the name of this one is, cause you're like, oh, I like it. What kind is it? It's Twist and Twirl by Proven Winners. What I also love about coleus is that they sort of grow off the side. So as soon as they're out of room to grow upward, they start trailing off the side unknowingly. But say you want something to trail off the side immediately. You can never go wrong with potato vine. It fills in quick. Yeah, it's a foliage. It's not gonna give you flowers on it, but there's no maintenance. There's absolutely no maintenance. And it fills in so huge, it trails all over. So mix a potato vine and a coleus. I mean, you just can't go wrong between color, foliage, no maintenance. What more are you guys asking for? And with only two varieties in there, the budget's good too. So you I keep saying this, but you just can't go wrong with coleus, you can't. <laughs> And we're back with the flowering kale. I just threw in four and look how perfectly round that got. It's amazing. Let's forget the other varieties for now because they are actually a little bit more money in that four to seven dollar range per plant. But with the flowering kale, you can either seed it in your house or you can get it in a pack or a flat or whatever and just throw them around because they are amazing. And the color may not look super stunning at the moment. The texture is really cool. The way it looks, it's really unique. But as the weather gets cooler, that's when flowering kale shows its true colors. And its true colors are bright, vibrant, and showy. And by that time, you're gonna really thank yourself for taking a chance on them because they are amazing. And right in here, this is where it's gonna turn vibrantly purple and just look, you're just gonna be wowed. Especially when all your other stuff isn't doing well in that cold weather. Flowering kale comes in and kicks everyone else in the butt and does its job by showing off. All right, now we're gonna go to the courtyard. We're gonna go ahead and take a peek at those new window boxes Jason built me that I planted. We didn't have time to do a video on me planting them because we were so busy. So we had to rush it. I'm so sorry, you guys, but come on, we'll show you guys what's going on in them. Here they are. They are filling in beautifully. And I just used what I had left. I've had a lot of questions about you know, how do you have all these leftovers? Where do you get them from? So when I seed indoors, I always have a lot left over from planting in my containers and gardens. And then when I go to the garden center in the beginning, I always grab extra. I have no plan in mind. I grab what I like. And then when I come back, I get everything planted and my leftovers are 
my leftovers. And that's what I use to fill in or grow something extra as we go. Um, so that's where the extras come in. And both of these boxes, believe it or not, are with extras. So um, this is pretty amazing. A lot of these things are seated indoors. Um, so right here you see um, the eucalyptus. This one here is the one I seeded indoors. And look at how pretty that's getting already. That's actually already quadrupled its size since I planted it, which I think was like about a month ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we've got a nasturtium on the side that I seeded indoors. This is a really, really vibrant blue salvia. It takes forever to blossom, but once it comes into blossom, you guys will get a kick out of seeing that color. And the smell smells like citrus. It smells citrusy. The plant itself, the flower itself, once it blooms, and then we've got some zinnias back there. Those are the dream lamps. We've got a cut flower kale in the crane red. So that's just starting to kind of bump up there. That'll be more of the height to match the grass in the back. This is just actually a lemongrass, an herb, lemongrass. So I always like it just even in planters. It adds a cool addition. Plus if you cut a few before company comes over and shake it, um, it smells like lemon. Over here you've got a wave petunia, which wave petunias are super affordable because they're not marketed as the super petunia. But they are beautiful, vigorous, come in many colors, they trail long. Um, I love them. And always intermixing some marigolds, which are also seeded animals, completely affordable. Um, just remember that when you're getting marigolds, they come in different heights. And Mexican mint. I seeded that in the house and it was in full yellow blossom and look at it. it's got all these buds it's about to come into this full beautiful yellow blossomed flower everywhere that is so gorgeous once you guys try out seeding in your house even just start with one thing see how it does like I think you guys are gonna be impressed and impressed with how much you end up saving but it's only if you're willing to put in a little more time. That's that's the key to it, is just putting in a little bit more time and you have to like it. So if you don't love it, then you just maybe want to look for more of the seeded annuals that come in flats. And that's where you can get more, um, more plants for your dollar. So I just had a random thought pop into my head, as they often do. So our shoot with Country Gardens is in 10 day, uh, nine days. So, could you take, so this sunflower here is about to open and of course we'd like them to, to wait until the, uh, the day of the photo shoot. You know, could we take like a black bag and just put it over the top? Would that stop it from, <laughs> from the, the look I'm getting? So. No. No. No? It needs air. It's just going to die in that bag. I mean, would you put a bag over your head to stay younger? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Another great affordable trailer and containers are the nasturtiums. Um, so what's really cool is they're super easy to seed indoors and they're super easy to seed outdoors. They germinate really fast. And um, the only downfall about nasturtiums is they recycle their leaves quite often. So they need a little bit more maintenance and leaf cleanup. Here's that beautiful blue salvia I was telling you about and it came into blossom over here and the hummingbirds just love it. But what's unfortunate is that it looks like the thrips love it just as much. So we will have to spray for those. And all we're going to use on that is either some Dr. Earth or Monterey. I'll have to see what I have on hand. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope I was able to give you guys some ideas for container gardening on a budget with all kinds of different varieties and flowers. So if you guys like this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Lawrence Network and don't forget to hit that bell so you get alerted for notifications to know when the next video is coming from the Lawrence Network. Thank you so much. Have an awesome day, you guys. Bye. If you guys are loving this video so far, please feel free to subscribe on that little box below there. And don't forget to hit the... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got the funk.
And don't forget to subscribe if you guys are liking this video so far. And don't forget to, no, not, don't forget. Don't you forget. Don't forget. <laughs> this could be another plant if you stick that into soil and keep that soil moist. Oh, I hate that word. Okay, if you see, <laughs> keep that. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy. Well, yeah, I mean, if you keep it moist, Daddy. it'll rot. <laughs>